Adaptation is a term that is being thrown around the media a lot recently. Whether that be live action adaptations, or book to screen adaptations, or book to stage adaptations, or screen to stage adaptations, or stage to screen adaptations. Adaptations just seem to be all film studios are doing at the moment. I feel like there's a lesser talked about area of adaptations that we're going to talk about today, and those being video game movie adaptations. The point of this video is just going to be going through sort of the main big video game movies and just having a chat about them, talking about are they good, are they not, what makes a good video game movie, and at the end of the video, um, a special guest is going to come on and talk all things FNAF movie. So we've got a trailer now, oh yeah, let's it up there, uh, just talking entirely about the FNAF movie and the adaptation of it in general, so stick around for that. The main movies we're going to be talking about though are the Super Mario movie, the Sonic movie, Jumanji, and Wreck-It Ralph. Now I think that these three films, well, the three films and then Wreck-It Ralph we'll get to later, but the three films being Super Mario, Sonic and Jumanji are three completely different takes on a video game adaptation, with Mario telling the story of most Mario games, Sonic being a completely different idea where, you know, you just sort of come into the real world as a Sonic character and do whatever, and then Jumanji being sort of, I guess, an original story, but still to do with games, so I'm counting it, hang on. With Jumanji, because that's kind of the outlier, other than Wreck-It Ralph, obviously. And the thing with Jumanji is there wasn't a Jumanji game. Obviously, the original Robin Williams film was an original concept. And then they did another one with Dwayne Johnson, Jack Black, Karen Gillan, and Kevin Hart. Uh, in which they sort of went into a video game version of the original board game. And I think that's a very good creative idea for an adaptation of like a game movie. The reason we're not going to talk about it loads is because it's not really a video game adaptation movie but I feel like it needed to be mentioned at least because it's a very good way of going this was the original in which the board game was involved and now it's a video game it's a very good modernization of Jumanji and it really worked now let's talk about the two big hitters in video game movies Mario and Sonic we'll start with Sonic now I really enjoyed the Sonic movie because it took what we already had as the Sonic games, you know, Green Hills, him just running around courses, and we did see a glimpse of that at the start, and then he goes through some sort of coin portal and ends up with James Marsden. <laughs> Adding to James Marsden, ever-growing list of interacting with strange CGI characters, that's just kind of what he does. He either that... Walls, he, does. he does, I have heard that on the grapevine. I mean, it's either that or hosting the Corny Collins show, that's his two niches. Sonic didn't just have, but Sonic didn't just stray from the original game idea because it still had Dr. Robotnik in the form of Jim Carrey. It didn't exactly stick with the, so it didn't exactly stick with the Sonic game as you know Sonic just runs through Green Hills collecting coins and has shenanigans because that would be a dull film. What they had is Sonic comes to the real world and Dr. Robotnik, as far as I remember, I haven't seen the Sonic movie in a while. Is already a pre existing human being who then just goes, ah, 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 Sonic the Hedgehog, and then turns psychopathic and tries to capture Sonic the Hedgehog kind of through James Marston? Kind of disenchanted style, where like the villain's kind of already established, but then with the coming mm. of this person from another world becomes a bigger villain. Exactly. And I think that's a very clever way of doing a video game adaptation, having it not be, here's the game but as a film, but going, what would happen if these video game characters did actually, you know, come into our world? Which will link on to a point later on about a fifth mystery film that I'm not going to mention yet. But if, you could, if you're clever, you can get the clues from me saying characters coming into the real world. It's a great film. It really is a great film. So overall, I think Sonic is maybe the best video game movie adaptation that we've had yet. Now let's move on to the most recent... Super Mario Brothers, the movie. Let's talk about the most recent example of a movie video game adaptation, Super Mario Brothers, the movie. Now this is pretty much the polar opposite of the Sonic movie where it does just tell the story of most Mario games but as a film, that being someone's captured by Bowser, Mario, do your job. <laughs> Ah, 
And I mean, this this film is just filled with Mario game references that if if you're a big fan of the games, which, spoiler alert, I am, you'll get these little pickups, these little Easter eggs they've chucked in there. Uh, but if you're not, you will still enjoy it as a film. What the film did fall down is they maybe too religiously followed this plot. I mean, it did mix it up with, instead of Peach being captured, it was Luigi, which means we didn't get enough of Charlie Day's Luigi, which I'm really upset about. The only thing they can do match by giving us a Luigi's Ransom movie, please, thank you very much. Please give us a Luigi's Ransom Don't whisper into it. Don't whisper into it. Stop it. I'll take that away from you. Please don't. They won't be able to understand what you're saying if you do that. So I think that's kind of a downfall of that film is it does kind of stick a bit too much to the plot. But there are enough little bits like the, the Mario... What? What? <laughs> it's just, it's just the, the movie sucks because it's stuck to the plot. No, that's what I said. I know. But I think that they also do a good job of adding in little bits and little segments like the whole battling Donkey Kong bit. The Mario Kart bit is very good. But I want to talk about the characters in this, because that's what I think really makes this film stand out. Now, you say what you want about Chris Pratt as Mario, you like him, you don't. I don't care. I think he was good as Mario, except for Mario in the films and any other media. He doesn't sound Italian all the time. And while we're talking about that, I think they did that very well. Well, in the advert, he was like, oh, I'm a Mario. And then he was like, we sound ridiculous. That's good. Clever. Well done. All the voice acting was very good. I think it was stuck enough to the video game without being the same. Like, if, Right. I'm... I, I can't get too passionate because I've already said, spoken about this in my Mario review. If you truly wanted a full hour and a half film where Mario sounded how he does in the games, by the end, you would hate Mario. It's as simple as that. No one would be able to sit through an hour and a half of, let's go, it's a good time, Mario number one. You'd hate it. So, fuck off. Overall, I think Sonic and Mario are both very strong video game movie adaptations however i think there is one only one other film that has done video games to movie much better than either of these two wreck it ralph now, i might do a full video on wreck it ralph at some point unless i waffle on for far too long about it in this video i think wreck it ralph is the perfect video game movie adaptation now yes there wasn't a wreck it ralph game in the real world until this film came out it's an original game obviously but the way they deal with arcades and like them traveling through the wires through these little trams and we do see your legacy game characters we see sonic we see pac-man we see cuba we see lara croft we see tapper we see sonic. frogger we see i've said sonic oh. we see that's it i think i'm done street fighter dance dance revolution and that so I think the way that we, the way they incorporate those classic games into a new story and tell it perfectly, the way they do the whole first person shooter thing, you follow a script, the way that like, watching how video games feel, if that makes sense. I mean, like with Ralph being, I don't want to be the bad guy, that makes sense. If you're blowing off a building 12 times an hour, you're probably going to be sick of it. Especially with a little Gene going, you're a bad guy. Shut up, Gene. Who asked you? The whole way they deal with video games in this movie is probably the best we will ever see in a film format. You can think I'm wrong, but then you're wrong, so flip that on yourself, bastards. Mm -hmm. Whereas Racket Ralph dealt with this in a not realistic way, but as in, you know, games are actually arcade machines and there's just cables. That's how, spoiler alert, that's how arcade machines work. I think there's one other film that deals with real life movie things being sentient beings in a much more interesting way. That's right. It's the fifth surprise film, everyone. It's Adam Sandler. It's Josh Gad. It's Kevin James. It's Peter Dinklage. It's Pixels. Whether you like this film or not, it does a very interesting job of video game stuffs. Like aliens finding a time capsule thing they sent into space with all of these vintage video games and going, it, war, what is it good for? And then sending asteroids and centipede and pac-man into the real world to fight people that's great the scene where the creative pac-man's like my child look how big you've gotten and then just gets his hand bitten off what that's mental where they like chase pac-man around in mini coopers that are colored like the ghosts from pac-man amazing so i think looking at these four films that we've briefly spoken about 
Mario, Sonic, Jumanji, Pixels. Four very different films, four very good ways of doing video game adaptations. Sorry, my blood is If you were to press me as to which one do I think did video game adaptation better, there would be two answers. Why on earth did I choose to put those two things? I could have done like that, but I went like that? Idiot. Those two being the Mario movie or Wreck-It Ralph. All of them, and you manage it, you know what, they all did it great in their own way, is what I'm trying to say. Um, but there is a new uh, video game movie coming out soon, the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. I don't know nearly enough about Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh, I'm currently doing a series on my channel, uh, this channel, uh, called Parker's FNAF School, where my very good friend Parker is taking me through FNAF lore and the games and parody songs and whatever stuff I need to know before I watch the film, because I know nothing about it. But I feel like it was criminal not to include it in this video. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our FNAF correspondent, Parker. Uh, Parker, are you there? Hello, yes, we're here in the next room over. Um, as Fraser Oliver has said, I am the FNAF expert. We run FNAF school. Um, yeah, so the FNAF film is um, entirely accurate in looks to the game, but at the same time, at the same time, it um, follows the format of many of the books that the fans are aware of, where it won't entirely be the same universe as the film, many speculate, myself included, that it will follow the format where it will give you hints to the lore of the games, but not completely follow that story, much like the, uh, the Silver Eyes and the new Security Breach books and the, um, the work logs, those those things that build up and give you hints towards what the game is. <laughs> Hello, so, nerdy Brit. Hints. 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 hints to what the the game itself is. But looks wise, it follows the um, the security camera format. You can see in some clips that there are direct copies and remakes of the screens you can see as part of the game. The animatronics themselves look entirely accurate from head moulds to colouring, aside from Bonnie, who is purple here, but the lighting and the fact that purple will be confused for William Afton as he is the purple guy, completely, that is understandable that they've made him blue. That's all I have to say on the matter. Beautiful blue, Bonnie. <laughs> It was back, pink and back to you in the studio, Fraser Olver. I'm next to you. There you go. That was my brief chat thing uh, on video game movies. Uh, thank you to Parker for giving his expertise on Five Nights at Freddy's as a thing, because I've still got no idea what's going on, really. Uh, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more FNAF stuff, you can click here to watch the playlist of Parker's FNAF School, in which Parker takes me through and just teaches me about all things FNAF. If you want musical stuff, you can click down here to watch my entire sponge of the musical reaction series. You can click here to subscribe. Here to subscribe to Mab, which is the podcast me and James and Edward's going to run on the <laughs> channel. I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Keep your voice on TikTok, baby. Absolutely not. Goodbye.